cataractcoach.com. Make sure the IOL is centered and you want that capsular axis to overlap the optic for 360 degrees. Our guest surgeon today is Dr. Omar Rashid from India and he does a beautiful surgery. Let's watch. That looks like a very nice incision here. A case with a moderate cataract making one side port incision there and looks like another one on the other side. Very nice technique here. Looks great. And let's see the capsular rexus. So what do we got next? Looks like some blue dye, tripan blue dye going inside the eye. Viscoelastic going on top of the cornea. That very thin viscoelastic, right? That's probably HPMC, hydroxyl methyl cellulose. And that coats the cornea very easily. There's the OVD going inside the anterior chamber. And now we see we have a good staining, pretty good red reflex too. Let's see the caps rexus technique. So just forceps, no cystotome needed. I like that. Pushing here with the tips, getting that flap turned over and making a nice rex. It's a beautiful technique here. I like the draping. Look at the eyelashes out of the way, the lid margin clean, the eye stink centered in the operating field. Beautiful job. Let's see the rexus is complete. That is a nice looking caps rexus. Beautiful technique here. I like that. Now, again, you may want to consider using marks on your forceps. You can use those same forceps. Just get a keratome, a steel keratome that you're going to throw away, and mark a 2.5 millimeter or 5 millimeter mark on the arm of the forceps so you can tell to figure out what size rexus you're making. So a little good hydro dissection here, a little bit more HPMC. The HPMC is very inexpensive. You can use a lot of it. And these are often coming in one cc syringe, so quite a good volume. Let's see the surgical technique for nucleus removal. So, cleaning up some of the anterior cortex, okay. Got a chopper with a ball tip, and looks like a pit, and then a horizontal chop, very nice. So making that little pit at the beginning is actually helpful. It'll, it's helpful because you can really get good traction of the nucleus. Now another horizontal chop there. So this is a very nice horizontal chop technique. And the nucleus is now going to be split into four pieces. Notice how that chopper goes under the capsorexis and around the lens equator. Now, each quadrant can be brought up and sub-chopped even. Look at that. Very nice. The video is slightly out of focus because the surgeon is probably young with a tremendous amount of great accommodation. I'm jealous. I wish I had the accommodation I had when I was younger. So now breaking up that other quadrant into two smaller pieces, very good technique. Now what I like most about this technique is the control. There's a lot of control here. Very careful, very meticulous, very much. You can tell the surgeon's in control of the whole case. Just let's center up that microscope a little bit more and get that cornea in the center of the operating field. And that thing just takes practice, that takes time. So I'd get the rest of the cortex with the IA probe. Good move. Let's not risk anything. Oh, so using a bimanual technique. So of course, two pairs of these at the beginning. So a bimanual technique. A bimanual IA is, is very useful because you really have great access because we can switch hands. So right now, the left hand has the infusion. The right hand has the aspirator. And the cortex can be removed quite nicely. Then the hands can be switched. And that does give you 360 access. Obviously, it requires an extra incision. So now there are two pairs of TC's incisions instead of just the one. But in most eyes, that should be of no consequence. So taking down that cortex looks very nice. Looks great. So nice technique here. And then we'll watch for the lens implantation at the end. So the title of the video is Remove OVD from Behind the Optic. And I'm going to show you this. At the end of this case, the technique here is great. The surgeon is very talented, no question about it. But at the end of the case here, you'll see that there's viscoelastic left behind the optic. And as a result, the optic isn't beautifully captured or held in place by that capsular axis. And so here, by manual, IA hands were switched, and now cleaning up everything else, and that looks great. So, fast forward here. Now this is hydro implantation. Looks like the left hand, the para, is infusing the eye with bound salt solution. There's no viscoelastic left in the eye, and here comes implanting a lens. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens. Very nice, that's gonna go in the capture bag. Let's see how he dials that in. So nice, just using the aspirator from the right hand and getting that in the capture bag. Very good, and get that lens centered up. And so, this is one of the things you wanna really perfect your Rex and keep it beautifully centered. Remember, I've told you over and over, your signature is primarily your capsule Rexus. 
and the incision, because those are seen forever by any ophthalmologist who ever looks at this eye, even a decade later. Also, though, is lens centration. So you can see now that distal optic edge is coming up out of the bag. So you don't want that. You want an erexus to overlap it. So what's the overlap? Look, it's asymmetric right now. So let's get that lens moved over a little bit. So go inside the eye and push that optic behind the rexus. Do you see the rexus is not overlapping the optic 360 here? So we want to go inside there and push that back. So there you go. Thank you. Good job. Not overlaps, but look what happens. Now at the end here, sealing up the incisions. And again, I'm looking at the position of that optic. It looks pretty good, but it could be a little bit better. It seems like that one end is still tilting up out of the bag. Beautiful surgery, Dr. Rashid, and show me another one with a beautiful Rexus.